Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. We've had a lot go on this past week. We've had our first few nights with freezing temperatures, which like yesterday it was 27, 28. Yeah, it's like just above freezing this morning. It's like uh, 30, 33. Feels pretty good out there today. We've got a lot of planting to do yet today. I'm hoping to get the rest of the boxwoods around the Hartley planted. Plus we've got a ton of bulbs still to get in the ground. Mm -hmm. So um, this past week we've also had uh, Malad Tree Farm show up with some of the big trees that we picked out earlier this fall and they can only bring like maximum of two per day because mm -hmm. they've got to go I mean it's like an hour drive right yeah. almost an hour or just over uh, out to the tree farm and they have to dig and they have to tie them up and bring them all the way over here so we've got one two two or three more left to be delivered I think I think just two Two more, mm, oh geez, now I don't know. I think we have two Norways and one Colorado you yet right, to yeah. be planted. One out by the like dumpster area. I need to think of a better name for that instead of like dumpster garden. The, um, just because it's close the to the dumpster. Path, the stone path garden. Yeah, stone path garden. So we have one hole out there and then we've got two Norways for this back garden yet. But it's just, it's magical seeing those go in. It's just it looks like pinch so me. so much better than before. It does. And it will look, I mean, kind of right now they are a little bit lined up in a row. They're kind of staggered a little bit, but we have so many other things to add to it to make it a very uh, nice mixed border of deciduous and evergreen. But we want like the back of it mainly to be big evergreens. So in the winter time, you're kind of backed by all of that. Well, it's a common thing to like, <clears throat> I've noticed on more like um i don't want to call it like estates or you know because they could be small lots even like smaller lots but i've noticed that people who do landscaping often they'll kind of like block themselves off from their neighbors to where there's it's like there's no there isn't a fence between you and your neighbor necessarily mm -hmm. but it's like there's a living hedge between yeah. you and your neighbor and i feel like that just adds for some like we love being in that um where our fireplace area is because mm -hmm, it feels so cozy yeah. and you kind of want to do that with your property where mm -hmm. you just kind of feel like you're alone in your property and nobody can watch you and you're not watching anybody Not that else anybody and... is, but no, you know what but... I mean. It's just the general feeling of the space. It kind of makes it feel more room-esque room and private. Room yeah, I think everybody kind of wants that Yeah. in a garden space. And we're getting there quickly with those yeah. big trees. It's so, so fun. I, and I'm really, really kind of angling for a pond back there now. I yeah. never thought I would. Well, But here we are. <laughs> okay. First video from this past week was bringing in calla and caladium bulbs, which I don't have very many of either of them, but I really had good luck storing them over the winter last year that I thought, well, let's just get them in and um, get them stored, get the process going so that we can plant them up early next year. It's fun to have things too to look forward to early in the season when you can't be outside yet. So anyway, got that done. And then potting up tomatoes and herbs for the greenhouse. So I had bought five um, herbs at our local farm stand. They had like potted herbs that were grown locally it's so fun so there's a mint thyme dill basil and oregano that I put in terracotta pots and then I left them in the greenhouse that day because I just wanted to not shock them too much and then I moved them to the Hartley a few days later and they look awesome they're doing great in there and I also uh, potted up this tomatoes that I started from seed so that one day I can't remember when that was it wasn't that long ago maybe three weeks ago or so I took some cuttings off of our tomato plant some sucker cuttings and rooted those all of them rooted beautifully Beautifully, I showed you one of the root balls of one of those and then I started another tray with seeds so I've got 48 tomato plants, 52 total there's already four in there 52 tomato plants but 48 from sucker and seed and that's a lot of tomatoes but I thought well if I lose half of them then I'll still have quite a number and if I only get one tomato per plant then that would be great so anyway that's what we did in that video Ruthie said how do you know a plant is ready to transfer I see roots typically I will pull, pull them out of their container if there are roots coming out the bottom of the container or if it looks like they're starting to circle then I kind of feel like that's the time to pot them up into the next size uh, if you can pull them out and there's still quite a bit of soil you can rough off that root ball like it'll kind of fall apart um, I don't think the plant needs to be transplanted at that point so it's one of those things you just kind of have to have to eyeball. Uh, Manor Born said, I love squash also, but run out of recipes. Do you have some favorites you could share? My favorite butternut squash recipe is Ina Garten's winter squash soup. I love that soup. It's so good. It actually has butternut squash and canned pumpkin <laughs> in mm. it and heavy cream and chicken broth and onion and you puree it. And then you can put creme fraiche and chives on the top. Oh my gosh, it is so good. I could have that like twice a week. 
You Aaron doesn't like too. soups, but. Oh, I'm just not thirsty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he says soup is a beverage. Unless it kinda, it's like. If it, a, you know, I like chunky soups. I like when there's. Where you can get the broth You know out. what? I, here's what it is. I like soups that you can eat with a fork. So, so there you go. There you go. Yeah. So I don't make it often, but I really, really love it. We like to roast squash too. So we'll roast it either with just like olive oil, salt, and pepper sometimes. Um, sometimes I'll do like the decadent butter and brown sugar and honey mm, and cinnamon. That's super good. And then oftentimes I will uh, just cube it up with uh, sweet potato, regular potatoes, carrots, parsnips, and put it all on a baking sheet and roast them that way. And that's really tasty as well. I add it to hash sometimes. Um, I don't know. I don't think I have like a ton of recipes for butternut squash, but those are my go-tos. Lori said, has Russell stayed off the greenhouse or do you anticipate having to replace the vinyl in the future? You know what? I don't notice I've him. I've never seen him on there except for that first day. Right. Well, when uh, Jenny and Jerry were here. Yeah. Um, I've got the blower on. I actually turned that on last week and we started rolling the sides down. In fact, I don't think we've even opened it up. I didn't open it up yesterday or the day before. Uh, because we are keeping it warmer in there. I think I have the temp set at 65. I'm going to play with that a little bit. I don't know. I mean, I kind of want to err on the lower side of the temperature because I don't want to run it super mm -hmm. hot. But then those tomatoes, to get production, I'm going to need to probably amp it up. I don't know. It's going to be interesting. Can you bring them in here or in a different? I think that they'll like the humidity and the amount of light they get out mm. there. I don't know. What about the Hartley? That may work too. Well, I have plenty, so yeah. maybe I try some in every yeah. location and see what happens. It's yeah. a good idea. Uh, Cynthia said, well, you need to add artificial light this winter to the tomatoes. That's the thing. Out in those structures, you know, they're getting all the light that the day brings, but there's so many gray days over, you know, overcast, snowy. We have a snow symbol in our forecast. Did really? you see that? No. Next Thursday. It's oh, like 30%. Wow. It'll go away in the next couple of days probably, but it's coming. Um, so our days are shorter as well, so they just don't get that intensity of light. So it's possible I might have to add supplemental lighting. And we've got plenty in here. And I've got, um, like ballast is that what they're called the little ballast thing yeah with the, yeah so i've got one that you can hang from the ceiling and that would be perfect because i wouldn't have to haul one of these stands out there i would just need to hang one of those ballasts above the tomato plants and provide that extra light should they need it uh lucas said when will a sunflower harvest be oh sunflowers are long gone at this point i didn't really do a harvest we just picked flowers throughout the season the birds loved that patch it was a harvest for the birds it was Man, you go birds. out there and they were just thick they would yeah like a flock would Which leave every time yeah so they picked them pretty darn clean mm -hmm. um and then we have cleaned that well i say we paul and bethany have been cleaning out the cut flower garden as we've been working on other planting projects and so they that that area is cleaned up and it's, it's kind of nice at the end of the season it's kind of like spring cleaning a little bit mm -hmm. you have this overabundance and it gets to a point where things are weary and tired and you're kind of ready to see it cleaned out so it's a nice kind of rest yeah time rebecca said so when uh when doing a potted planting do you not need to use biotone or fertilizer do you if it's an outdoor planting in a pot um in this case, I just used fresh soil. I actually was thinking last night, I'm going to go in today probably and fertilize them with some, let me grab it. This is it right here, the tomato tone. You do one and a half teaspoons for every four inch pot. So I bumped all of my seed tray ones up into four inch pots. So all of them are in that size now. So I'll just have to go along one and a half teaspoons, sprinkle it around the edge of the pot and water it in. I didn't do it the day I transplanted because that's a lot for your plant to deal with. So I just wanted to get them repotted, settled into their new home and it's been you know a week now. So now I'll add some fertilizer and get them, get them going a little bit. Um, when I'm doing, let's see if it's an outdoor planting in a pot, when I do outdoor plantings in pots, I do add in biotone sometimes. It kind of depends. I'll do a slow release, a proven winner's um, continuous release food. Uh, that one lasts for like six weeks. So I'll do that sometimes. Oftentimes though, just starting with fresh soil and then fertilizing on a consistent basis with your liquid stuff is what our routine is. Next video was still planting hookerella, false spirea, and hibiscus. So I just had a few more things. Well, I, Still have a few more things I need to get in the ground, but it was the I Spy Hookerilla, the Mr. Mustard False Spirea, and then the Purple Pillar Hibiscus. They're all really ex like in exciting spots. Every time I plant something, I'm like, that looks great. <laughs> I love it in that spot. So I'm really excited for next year because, you know, right now, I mean, the Hookerellas are like, they looked prime time and they were like, 
mature size already. Mm -hmm. um, fall spirea had their fall color. Their, I think the best time for that plant is in the spring when they break dormancy because they are so vibrant and full of pink and chartreuse and kind of yellowy. I mean, they're so bright. So I'm excited to see that. I have a fall spirea. It's not the same exact variety, but there's one in the back garden. And then I had one at our last house and I loved it so much. They do spread by rhizome. They spread um, like sucker up. Um, so you usually have to once a year pull the suckers. It's not a huge deal, but it's something to think about if you want it in your garden. And then the purple pillar hibiscus, they grow like 10 to 16 feet tall and just two to three feet wide, right? Or yeah, about three feet wide. So they're these really beautiful pillar shaped hibiscus. And I happen to have a white pillar that's in its second growing season. Look, like I can't even believe that plant's a second season. Hmm. I showed that one to you, right? It's by the, the Tiger Eye Sumax. Yeah. I mean, it's just so thick and so yeah. gorgeous. Yeah, it's great. I'm excited about it. Uh, Rosemary said, doesn't an established tree like the one you planted the hookerellas around, doesn't that tree mind when you dig holes around it and essentially cut some of its root system? I found one root <laughs> in all of those holes. How many did I plant? Like seven, I think? Yeah. I need one more to finish my drift next spring. But I think the root that I ran into was less than the size of the diameter of my pinky and I kind of scooted it to the side I mean you can really that's why I planted with a shovel though because you do want to be careful we don't deal with surface roots on most of our stuff the hardest tree for me to plant under on our property is the maple by our back shade porch mm. that area and that's why I opted for hookra uh, hellebore plug they were kind of plugs mm -hmm. because I just I don't know how I would get a one gallon size plant in that area mm. uh, especially right up close to the trunk but there are no surface roots like pushing up sidewalks they didn't run into much when they were digging it out for the brick sidewalk either i think things just go down and that could be because our water table is lower possibly yeah so they're going like the roots are searching for water instead of staying more surface because there's plenty of water available I don't know. Yeah, I wonder if that's what it is, because the only way that our trees really get a good enough drink is is through irrigation. You know, our irrigation, yeah. whatever we give them. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if that precipitates more yeah. precipitates more <laughs> roots going down. I wonder what plants will do at the back of the new property, because there's an irrigation ditch that has been running through that property for like a hundred years. Yeah. Or yeah. So. Um, yeah, um, at least 70, because I found a f an aerial photo um, from like 1955, and that ditch was, was, was there. Was there. It was there. We lived in a house when, until I was six, just like right over that property. I mean, yeah. just right there. And so that irrigation ditch, we butted up to that. That was our back, like our backyard, and then there was the irrigation ditch. I can't yeah. believe we have a piece of property on that same ditch, just like, I don't even know how many yards down. Not yeah. very, not very far. Um, anyway, I wonder though, like all that water running through for so many years, how far it soaks down. I mean, that's probably why there's all the willows. I mean, like wild willows yeah. growing back there and I love it back there. Uh, Miss the Bow said, does anyone know what kind of sumacs those are? Tiger eyes sumacs. I think if I remember correctly, the tag said six feet by six feet was the max size. Now they do sucker as well. Not as bad as the, the traditional sumacs, the older varieties that spread like wildfire these uh, have popped up a couple in fact paul when he was out there uh, earlier on the season he sent me a picture he's like do you want me to pull these and i told him no don't pull any of the them because i want them to naturalize to a point over there so what's over there is all that they've spread this year and there's only like two or three suckers mm. so just to give you an idea but if it rains like if you live oh, in, the, sure. in a rainy yep. area i mm -hmm. don't feel like you'd have anywhere near the same experience that's probably true i forget that I forget that. Yeah. Area, I just am so not used to, you yeah. know, dealing with that. But yeah, if you get more moisture, you may deal with more suckering. But it's typically one that's known not to sucker quite as quickly. In a dry climate. But. But it's, it says that on the tag. So yeah. I'm thinking that that's probably more, I yeah. mean, if you put it versus the other one. So, you, you know, you, when Paul asked you that, I was, I would have said, oh yeah, cut it. Because I, I think they look better when you can see just barely underneath them. Mm. Um because when the suckers come up, it just kind of makes it, Poof. it makes it wild. Yeah. It makes it, it like gives it a very wild look. Mm -hmm. And I like a little bit more of a manicured look where you can see underneath and it looks like I it's I think been you need trimmed. a little of both. Yeah. I don't feel like in that area necessarily is where you'd want the wild look. How come? Well, because the whole area is kind of manicured with the way the grass flows. It's not, 
it looks man, it looks artificial. So it's like just roll with that. Just make things that you know are well trimmed and trained. I think the more suckers the better because the color is so pretty. It's well, the could, best fall color we have in our property. You could plant more if you wanted more. Well, yeah, I suppose. Or I could dig up those suckers. Yeah. And plant them about. All, all about thief. the property. You're a thief. Oh, true. You're just stealing. Nobody tell. Amariah said, I would love to see you guys do a lawn care video. Aaron, your grass always looks like perfection. What do you use for fertilizer? Do you overseed every fall? Tell me all of your secrets. I feel like we show it in videos. Like fertil- you, you jumped on the gator and we fertilized that one time. The problem though with kind of how our videos go a little bit is that our videos truly just show what we're doing in the garden that mm-hmm. day. We don't do very many, you know, subject yeah. specific type videos. videos. Yeah, which is hard because it's like, well, if you watch all of our videos, you'll pick up little snippets everywhere. Yeah. But I don't expect anybody to watch all of our <laughs> videos, you know, and catch every single detail. So I don't know. I mean, it would be a good idea to put something okay, together. Okay, so here, in a nutshell, I don't think I'm going to keep uh, overseeding. I did that when we first uh, spread the lawn out there, seeded the lawn. Um, then that fall I did it one time, but it's so thick now that mm-hmm. I don't think that's necessary. So I'm not going to do that. I do, pl- I aerated this spring. I plan to do it probably again before winter. Um, I fertilize, I do fertilize a lot. I use the Espoma organic stuff and I probably fertilize with their stuff maybe like six times throughout the year. You think six? I thought you do or, spring, five or six, summer. And then a late summer and then a winterizer. That's four. No, because I do I do spring and then I do the green bag, which is like the The regular lawn. The regular one. And then I do that one again. So that's three. And then I do the summer revitalizer. And then I think I hit it with the green bag again and then the winterizer. But you know, I think with that organic stuff, I don't really know that you can overdo it. Mm -hmm. It's you're not gonna burn your lawn. And I feel like we have such a long growing season that you probably couldn't do that in a lot of areas of the country where you have a shorter season. But since ours, we start so early and then finish so late. I mean, look at us. We're, we just put the winterizer on like a week ago Mm -hmm. and we're almost to November. Yeah. And we start in like February, March sometimes. Yeah. So I think that's why we can get away with six because you Mm -hmm. do it like once a month or so. Like if you fertilize every, you know, four weeks, Mm -hmm. we can get six easy. And then I also put, um, iron tone maybe once or twice. I think I did it twice on the lawn Um, and also one application of gypsum and one or maybe two applications of um, soil acidifier because we're so alkaline. So anyway, we just throw a lot of junk on our lawn. (laughs) It looks so good though. I mean, so when we did that cut flower, the flower giveaway video, which I think I'm probably talk about here in a minute. When you put the drone up and showed, especially like those new grass pathways, and Mm -hmm. they're not even like, there's still weeds in them. They're not um, seeded all the way to the edge because my flowers were like totally flopping over the edges. I've got to move everything back a little bit. Um, So it was blocking sprinkler water, but it made me like, I had to catch my breath. Like, yeah, it was so pretty. And uh, yeah, it's looking really good. The grass looks good. So so if you live in an area that is high alkaline like us the sulfur soil acidifier um, could be beneficial if you live in a a really acidic area you might have to throw lime on Mm. there and then the whole like we just had some yellowy kind of areas so that i thought throwing some iron on there might be Mm -hmm. helpful too well and gypsum as well i think for those spots yeah if you have clay then gypsum helps with breaking up the soil we do have some pretty hard pan soil out there so i think there's areas that are more tough and some of those things are not that expensive honestly like if you go somewhere and get bags of gypsum or sulfur those, like 10 bucks for 50 those pounds. Those elements or, are not yeah. expensive to buy. Mm-hmm. Midwest Gardener said, do they still recommend teasing the roots when planting? I think when something is root bound, like root bound, root bound, you know, fluff that root system up. I think some people maybe do it a little bit too much. Uh, most things, and they say like for the annuals that come, I'm, I don't know. It, you know, I, I saw videos, I saw a video of... Um, arborists that were planting trees in a park Mm -hmm. and they went to town on the roots of these trees they were planting and they were pretty small Mm -hmm. um i mean they're probably no more than six feet tall Mm -hmm. so they were you know pretty small trees but like they took off like so much of the dirt and of the root ball and i was like 
it kind of like, but they're arborists, you know what I mean? So like. Not, uh, yeah. I don't trust every arborist that's out there though. That's true. Yeah. yeah. We've run into some people where you're like. <laughs> you just got to kind of do what feels right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what I do, like with annuals that uh, we plant in May, oftentimes they're not root bound enough to mess with their root balls. I just pop them in and they grow. If it's like an annual grass, those grow so fast that oftentimes you take them out of their can and you can all, all you see is white roots. I will break up a root ball in that Alls case. Alls you see? Did I you say all? No, you didn't say that. Oh, I just thought of that. I was like, no way. <laughs> no way did I, I just say that. <laughs> um, when we recently started planting the boxwoods behind the Hartley, they had, since we've been taking care of them for months, months at a time, um, they started to root in underneath their can into the ground. And so there's a root ball underneath their can and I'm just ripping that root ball off and taking them out of the can. And then I do clip the root ball inside just like three times, just a little clip just to break that root memory. But I don't work on like roughing the whole root ball out. I don't do it super intensely like that. And our stuff seems to do great. Peggy said, can you transplant the tiger eye sumac suckers to other places in the garden? Um, we just talked about that. Yeah, I think we could. We just cut the runner and make sure you get the root part of it. And I think we could absolutely plant them in other places and we just might. Olaf said, do you consider yourself an introvert? You act so natural and confident in front of the camera. What about in real life when you meet new people? What about Aaron? I think, let's talk about you first, Aaron. Okay. <laughs> I, think, I think Aaron is a little bit of both. I think he, you, yeah. I think you are introverted like you don't really need necessarily that yeah, interaction I have, I have no trouble like breaking the ice with someone i can start a conversation with anybody mm -hmm. um i don't like love it though i don't i don't crave or need that um so do you feel good after it though like do you mm, feel does it charge you up a little bit give you energy or do you feel like you need to yeah, kind of retreat it, it and... can it, uh, the thing is i maybe like 50 50 like yeah. some of the times it feels good and i like to be in crowds of people sometimes mm -hmm. but other times i really just need to recharge um, I just, I can't do it all the time. You are a really good connector. Like you are good at connecting with yeah, people and communicating. Yeah. Yeah. Aaron communicates with the best of them. He is so good about, like, he keeps in touch with so many people, like so many people. Like I'll ask you what, what, you know, what'd you do today? What did your day hold? And he'll just tell me all the people that he, you know, was chatting with and like you just keep Usually all the... a lot of it's business related. I feel like um, I connect with people like on a business level easier than I do on like a but so many. Level. It's just crazy to me, and you uh, you keep everybody kind of like I don't know. Yeah. Round it up. You are an introvert yeah. to the max. I am. I am an introverted person for sure. Um, I prefer to work by myself. Um, yeah. I I mean I don't know if that's a great thing. I kind of think that like making videos is sort of an introverted thing to do anyway, because you're just by yourself or yeah. with me, which, you know, you're pretty comfortable with. Mm -hmm. um, so like there's no, you do meet people, but it's so rare. It's like once or twice a year when um, we go out when there's like a group events. of people. I mean, yeah. you, like you go to Boise or something, you'll, two or three people will stop you and yeah. say hi. But And usually I feel more in my element. That's what where I feel more comfortable. Like if, it, if I'm in my element down at the garden center, mm -hmm. when I worked down there full time, being down there and t chatting with people, with customers and stuff, but it wasn't all just about garden stuff because we know these people, you know, mm -hmm. it's a small town and I was very comfortable in that sort of environment. I think that's what it is. I need to be comfortable with where sure. I'm at um, and in my element. However, when we go out to events like the Grand Garden Show, I mean, I feel like I'm with a bunch of like the most lovely people out there. And my, my preference is just, to chat with people like one-on-one -on -one. Mm -hmm. um, like meet and greets are awesome presentations are not <laughs> I don't like to get up in front of people I don't like to have like eyes staring at me like mm -hmm. that like I just ooh. you don't like to be the center of attention no I don't I would much rather I remember right before this year when we were gonna do our keynote I uh, instead of being up in the green room which is where everybody usually is I don't know if that's what they call it but you know it's where like on Mackinac yeah where people are prepping and like you know, people hang out until it's their turn to go up on stage. I opted to go down where the line was forming in the morning because there's like velvet ropes that rope off, you know, people from coming in until the time is come. Ready. Ready. <laughs> uh, and so I just went down there and just started at the beginning and just started talking to people. And that calmed me down so much just hmm. to like, these people are friends, you know. Sure. It's not, I'm not standing up in front of a bunch of strangers, even though I don't know everybody, um, but there are a bunch of friendly people who like yeah. the things that I like. And that made me feel more in my element. We took that personality test. Do you remember what you and I got? 
here's my personality. No, <laughs> I don't remember anything like that. That's the other thing. Details. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think it was the next day. Well, details you don't care about because yeah. like you'll remember plant names and other people are like, how does she remember all the plant names or how to take care of this or that? So you remember the things you care about. It's just that you let things go that don't matter to Birthdays, you. Birthdays, events, like special events, names of people. Oh my yeah. gosh. Things, j- not that I don't care about the people, but like names are tough for me. Yeah. So there's. Do you ever a- forget people's names that you shouldn't forget? Yeah. Like. Uh-huh. Like I'll, I'll forget names of some of our neighbors that like we say hi to all the time. And I'm like. I know who you are. I've known you for like 15 years. Yeah. You know, n- yeah. not like we're friends necessarily, but like I well, should I remember think, your name. I think you just have little lapses in memory. This morning I was making out a list for <laughs> Halloween um, and I need to have stuff for s'mores because the kids are going to all want to do s'mores around the fire. I could not remember what a graham cracker was. I'm like, <laughs> they're the brown things. <laughs> they're like rectangle shaped. What the heck is that cracker called? I That's sat funny. there like in silence, straining my brain. Yeah. Trying to remember what that was. I think that's normal. <laughs> right? Just to have those Just little little moments where you can't remember. Okay, yeah. let's move on. Next video was working on the stone path and Hartley landscaping update. So Aaron and I took after a little bit more of the stone path that we had abandoned. Once it got hot, we got what, like 15 feet done and then we stopped and it looked like that all summer long. It was yeah. just so hot out there and it's kind of brutal when there's no shade. We also had so many other things to do like planting. Yeah. You know, like we, we only have a window for planting. Yeah. And so it's like, let's just spend the whole summer planting and, mm-hmm. and doing gardeny things. Gardeny things. <laughs> Stone pathways are gardeny They're things. Kinda, but also you can do that when you can't plant. Yeah. And it's such heavy hard work that it's nice to do it when it's cooler. Mm-hmm. And I, I have a feeling because I have so many things to do. I'm going to help my parents with some bulb planting. I'm going to do, a, I've got like 7,000 bulbs. I need to still put plant here. It's a lot. Um, boxwoods to put in the ground. So I'm going to keep going on the planting front and then we'll probably be out there working on the stone pathway when it's like frozen ground, I'm yeah. guessing. Thank goodness we're just laying them down on the frozen ground. Yeah. Or on the ground. <laughs> right. <laughs> Period. Um, and then I gave you an update on how the Hartley landscaping was going. It looks different than it did that day. More things have been done. The gravel for the walkway is supposed to be delivered yesterday, so I'm hoping it's delivered today. And then that's pretty much it, like to button just the immediate area around the Hartley, where other than like the grass, like moving further away from like the formal design. We'll need to do some stuff next spring, but it's it's coming along. Uh, Nellie said, what happened with all those beautiful trees you and your husband bought? Well, they are showing up. Yeah. One and two at a time, and it's magical. ER said, love all the hardscaping videos. With the flagstone path with compost between the stones, will you have to spray weeds that grow up in the compost? Um, it's possible. Uh, we do a lot of hand pulling, and we do a lot of, um, they use that Ho, oh, we've got several. We've got ho? like a hula ho, which wouldn't make it in between the cracks, but we do have a winged weeder, which was my preferred weeder tool. Um, and that one's got like a this shape. It's like a triangle, but kind of like curved up in the, the center. But the point is, it's got a, uh, sorry, I keep hitting the mic. It's got a point on one of the sides, and you can kind of tip the tool and get it between cracks and pull weeds up that way. If you want to spray something like that, the dead weed brew works really well for things like that. You just use it at the height, we use it at the highest mix concentration you can, and that's the Captain Jack's dead weed brew. It's like 12% mix ratio, I think. Lori said, what about concrete benches, fancy ones? I want comfy benches. I love con- the look of concrete benches, but they're not that comfortable. I want something with a back that's got a little bit of a curve, something mm-hmm. that you'll actually want to sit in for a while. But you never know. We might pop a concrete bench out there somewhere. Uh, yeah, concrete benches, they can get really bulky. They can. There's some beautiful ones out there, though. We displayed one at the garden center yesterday. It was really pretty. Yeah. And it's a little bit more petite. We'll see. Chrissy Cottage Garden said, how has the cardboard been working as a weed suppressant? Excellent. Yeah, no issues at all. No issues whatsoever. Highly recommend. Yes. Carol said, why is landscape fabric controversial? That was a huge question because I kind of, I stated that. Um, because there are a lot of people out there. It's controversial in flower beds. It's, it's not, I yeah. don't think it's controversial in, in walkways. walkways. Because it um, hampers the ability for soils like natural rhythm, I guess, like moisture and like suppressing things and heat and it just messes with the balance, Mm -hmm. I guess. Um, A lot of landscape fabric is not even worth using because it's so junky and it will fall apart so fast. So if you are going to use landscape fabric, I would highly recommend using DeWitt Pro. 
it's the only stuff we use. It's even hard to cut with scissors. It's kind of a pain to put down, um, to be honest, because it's so darn thick, but it facilitates water drainage really well. You put the fuzzy side down. We <laughs> remember when we were very first having, because we have landscape fabric down in our raised bed garden, not underneath the raised beds, but in the pathways because we have gravel on top. And I'm so glad we did that. But the guys that came is a crew that we haven't, I don't think, hired since. No. It's a I'm not even, I don't even know I if think they're in that, business still. Well, they, they installed all the landscape fabric fuzzy side up, which is not the proper way. Water will not, it doesn't soak down like that. The fuzzy side kind of helps wick that moisture through. So we went out there and we're like, you have to flip all of this the other way. Sorry, guys, but you should know that. You're a professional landscape crew. Right. Um, anyway, so we've used it underneath gravel walkways like that. And then the only place we have used it in flower beds is under a, a little spot of the west side, the arb hedge, and then underneath Versailles boxwood hedge because there is such a bindweed problem. Bindweed is incredibly hard to take care of. And if it takes hold in your hedge there's no spraying it out because you can't spray a weed that's growing up inside your hedge because you'll kill your hedge so we thought well the only way we can get this under control without like sterilizing the area and waiting a couple of years to plant is to put down one width of landscape fabric cut holes in it plant our arbs or our boxwoods and that way it takes care of the weeds and it has it really has yeah. We had a couple of problem areas. I do have one boxwood, I don't know if you guys remember, but there's a flower bed right by one of our, um, it's it's by our per, uh, portico, okay, I can't remember that, in the Versailles garden. There's a big birch on one side and then there's a smaller birch on the other side. There's a sphere boxwood underneath that smaller birch that has bindweed all over in it and I'm just constantly pulling it out. There's That's all I can do mm. for the rest of that boxwood's life is just pull the bindweed when I can see it. And that's do you kind think it'll of ever thing. get smaller or like eventually die if you but just keep pulling it possibly sometimes the things get ahead of you and you're like oh dang oh yeah <laughs> i should have pulled that a long time ago uh chicken house said why not any more weeping willows we've talked about it weeping willows you have to treat with a systemic insecticide to keep the borers out We're trying to eliminate as much of that as we can weeping willows are glorious though i love the ones we have in our garden they are weak trees and they do have a lifespan as well so those are a something short lifespan yeah and those are some things to consider i mean they're the type of tree that'll blow over in a windstorm mm -hmm. especially if they have not been treated if they tr are treated they have a lot longer of a lifespan i'm fairly certain ours weren't treated heavy enough they weren't given enough systemic to for the size of tree up until when we moved in probably because there are you can see some evidence of bore damage in the past i haven't seen anything new thankfully but i'm you know that those are all weak points in the tree every time a bug enters your tree that pr produces a weak point um, but you know you get windstorms and you've got branches all over the ground and all of that so while i would love to plant more i just don't think it's a wise a really wise choice not to say i won't make that choice at some point because they are so pretty they do grow well here and they grow fast mm -hmm. but we get i mean we get some pretty fierce windstorms here i mean you guys know if you've watched any of our wind clips um and every time like this one by mm -hmm. the greenhouse i can see it out our kitchen window and i just watch and it like the whole thing yeah oh they're pretty malleable in terms of uh, they are. is that the right word they, yeah they're flexible they're flexible mm -hmm. to a point to a point yeah uh, next video was giving away flowers to some sweet people in assisted living and to our community. That whole day was like, it was one of the, the best, more fulfilling days out in the garden. Uh, we kind of last minute threw together a, a kind of like attribute this whole project to Bethany. She kind of was like, let's do this, you mm -hmm. know? Uh, so we kind of put our feelers out, whoever was available to come and help cut. I mean, we put it together the evening before we did it. Um, so it was perfect too. I think there were seven of us, perfect amount really for in that cut flower shed. Some of us were out cutting, some were assembling. My mom was able to partake, which was really cool. Um, so, you know, her ankle is improving so much, but she was able to stand at the table and make flower arrangements while other people were cutting. Then we took some bouquets to an assisted living facility near us, and then we gave a rest, the rest of the bouquets away to people that just happened upon us at the garden center. And I think we gave away just under 100 bouquets that day. Nice. It was just, it was just such a good day. I mean, we started at nine and we were done by like three, like a hundred bouquets. When you have many hands, it just goes so much faster. Sure. Uh, Feeling Freedom said, I've never seen Bethany at work in the garden. Was that her in the overalls? It was, that is Bethany. Honestly, you guys, I don't know how we got so lucky. I mean, there's no way that we could do it without Paul and Bethany. Yeah. 
there's like they can't ever leave no <laughs> ever. not the scale that we're at no they are just uh, yeah i mean and it's funny because like i'll have a few things that i'll i'll text like hey can you guys put this on your list and i always tell them i don't mean for you to do it right away just whenever it's convenient would i like i don't want to push it too much because i want them to like working here and I just um, say, so just add it to it. And I'm adding it to my list as well. So whoever gets to it first is just something that needs to be done. And like that day, it'll be done. Like there's no, it's just, it's nuts. I don't know. Anyway, yes, that is Bethany. Amazing. She's got a really giving heart too. Um, just constantly, you know, there's a lot of things that come out of here that we don't have time to take out and, you know, disperse to people. Bethany takes things and like if there are plants that maybe can't make it into videos or we weren't able to do a project with the, this or that or I've got leftovers, uh, I want them to go to new homes and things and uh, you know a lot of times there are a few friends who will take a lot of things but then the rest Bethany just finds new places for everything it's awesome she just wants to see people have fun and try new things she's and she's a good connector with she's people. really good connector so she'll know if if there's something like oh I know someone who can use that yeah it's just awesome the grass pathways were such a good choice for the cut flower garden yes they were <laughs> Aaron was right yes they were yes so yeah yeah <clears throat> I was worried at, that it was just going to be, and we'll see, that it was going to be a tremendous amount of maintenance. No, there's no we'll see. We now know. We <laughs> well, now the grass know is was... so brand new in there, but it's so beautiful. It almost mm. doesn't matter if it's more, I mean, it is more maintenance than mulch, but it mm. looks 100 million times better than mulch out there. Mm. It's cooling, um, and it just adds so much vibrancy to that space. Stephanie said the drone shots are fabulous. They are. When I was previewing that video, Aaron was upstairs with the kids playing so that I had a chance to watch it and preview it. And I texted him. I texted him. I'm like, these drone shots are awesome. You did a good job. Um, do you have every row of flowers staked? No. They are perfectly straight and upright. The only things we have staked are the dahlias. Uh, and then we had the sunflowers and corn growing on ranch panels and the sweet peas growing on ranch panels. Everything else is willy-nilly. It's kind of up to its own devices, I guess. Yeah. So I have a lot of curved stems, which I actually like to have for my type of arrangements. Mrs. Bobber said, one of the best videos of the year. Question, where do you get all the jars? So 60 some of the jars came from our loft here in the barn. Actually, a little bit more than that, I think. 68, 69, I don't know. And then Bethany brought a couple of crates full of jars. So anyway, it worked out great. And I think some of the jars were just like apple, old applesauce jars, like from the store. You just clean the labels off of them. Uh, and I do that often too, just to have around. Somebody asked about um, sending you jars for that. Oh my, that I would be hard. They're so breakable and bulky. Yeah, it'd be difficult. To, it'd be really expensive to ship them all. If you're local, you could drop them at Andrews yeah. <laughs> and we could, we could use them, but um, I wouldn't go to the trouble of trying to ship them. You could also run into the issue of um, people like getting too many. Oh, and sure. And then, then you're like, well, I don't have enough you mm -hmm. know, flowers to fit all these jars. However, Bethany and I were chatting about just the whole experience and we were talking about trying to maybe set up a schedule with a set day, like mm -hmm. two days a month or something, and just inviting those, you know, our friends. Um, I don't, a lot of people ask if we're going to ever do like a you pick or whatever. I don't like having people I don't know in my space, especially because mm -hmm. we live here. Uh, so I have a, like a handful of people I like, I like to have in our space or I feel comfortable showing up at our property. And um, maybe if we have a set schedule and just like send out that schedule and say, hey, these days we're going to plan on cutting and, and dispersing. So if you want to make it that day, awesome. We'd love to have you. Um, and just kind of planning on that. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think that would a be idea. a really good idea. It's just something that I knew we needed to have more of a schedule in place, but it's just one of those things that we needed a little bit more thought process, and Bethany's really good that way. Felicia said, so I think this is the first time I cried real tears watching Garden Answer. Hearts were truly filled that day, including ours, <laughs> big time. Um, also, the overhead shot of the South Garden really put things in perspective. Do you have to pinch yourself sometimes? All the time all the time. I mean, there are still days where I feel overwhelmed and I feel like our list is so long. And then I have to stand back and realize like we have accomplished so much in this space and there's so much we've been able to do that we wouldn't have ever been able to do without you guys supporting what we do and watching our videos for that. We thank you. It's just, it's, cr it's crazy. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. Definitely pinch yourself, pinch myself. <laughs> 
moments all the time. Katie said, when you cut back things like zinnias for winter, do you need to dig up the root ball too, or do you leave them all on the ground? We just pull them. They come up roots and all. The only things that we dig up um, are like the corn stalks and the sunflowers because they form a pretty tough root ball. So we cut them off at the base and then just kind of fork them out later. And oftentimes we do that in the spring because if you do leave them through the winter, they do break down a little bit, so they come out a lot easier. The last video for this week was planting trees around the Hartley. Oh my gosh, this made such a huge difference. Four Pacific Sunset Maples went in. It was a rainy day and it was cold. I was cold that day, were you? No. Do you remember? Well, you were you were working hard. Yeah, whenever we were all, you're whenever you're working. Yeah, I was warm during that part when we were digging holes and stuff. But I remember in the end when I was taking you guys around to show you how it all turned out. I was frigid. I was just freezing cold. Um, and then that same day, we did get a few of the box, which just kind of laid out, so you could see a little bit of what we were thinking vision wise. I uh, didn't get any of them planted. And then that day was the day the first large tree showed up, the big Norway spruce yeah. in the entryway that's just, it's kind of like Dr. Seuss style. It's a little bit weepy. There's a lot of space between branches. Architectural. Yeah, it's so cool. I just love that tree. Jojo said, I'm curious how many days pass typically between when you film a video, when it gets posted after editing and all that. I think we stay about two days ahead. Yeah. Yeah, you film it. Oftentimes, Ken will edit it the next, the next day, the following day, and then, and then it, it'll get posted the day yeah. after that. It always is like a tiny bit awkward if you follow my Instagram. Sometimes, like it's off a little bit, uh -huh. um, or I'll, you know, in my Instagram talk about how like we just had freezing temperatures, but in our video we're kind of behind. Like mm -hmm. you're seeing two days before, uh, and we try to keep th things as like close as possible so that it make everything makes sense. I. It's funny because I like it when we get a little bit ahead. In the summertime when we're rocking through planting, we do get a, like a week sometimes ahead. I don't like that actually because then I feel like there's way too much time right. passing between when I actually film and when the video goes out. I like to be two or three days ahead max. But that means if somebody gets sick or if we need to, you know, we don't skip days very often. Right. But... But if you do need to skip a day. It's because we didn't have enough in the bag, you know, right. to, to cover that day. Roxanne said, curious, was there a reason you used a different tree place for these new big trees or was it just the luck of the draw? So, new tree place. Well. It was the same tree place. Yeah, I don't really understand the question, but we have like three places typically we get trees Mal for the most part. Yeah. Malad Tree Farm for the big, big ones. trees. Jaker. For, for the big still trees. Still big. Yeah but smaller than Malad. They're B&B. &B. Like yeah. it's big enough to be, they're like two to three inch caliper trees typically. And then my parents' garden center, we pick up other things. In fact, I kind of want to go down if we can sneak down. There's a Zelkova down there that I've been eyeballing and maybe yeah. a service berry in smaller cans. Sure. And they're so pretty right now. It's so fun to go down into a garden center in the fall. Your parents are limited on space. You know, they don't have like acres and acres right. and acres to mm -hmm. bring in giant trees. Mm -hmm. So they kind of specialize in smaller rooted trees yeah uh they do bring in i think the biggest size is they do bring in some caged some bnb &B in cages mm -hmm. um usually red point maples are they do heavy on those and then maybe some big plums and stuff um but biggest can size is 20 to 25 gallon but they'll go anywhere where from one gallon all the way up to the 25 gallon size so pam said everyone is just amazing i've been wondering for a while how does it look driving up the drive with the trees on each side of the drive with the fall color it's pretty However, they're okay. Yeah, they, they kind of scorched a little bit this year. They did. And it's funny because there was one grass sprinkler that was stuck mm -hmm. and it was kind of nailing one of the trees. And that tree looks better than all the rest yeah. of them. And it's fuller and bigger and bright red color. So we're kind of guessing that maybe the trees need a little bit more water mm -hmm. um, than what they got this year, which is probably, I mean, given the fact that they scorched is probably right. Yeah. So now we know how to proceed. Yeah. You I mean, you... You don't want to overwater things. No. You know, so you kind of try to ride the line. You just, those kinds of, you just learn. You take a look at, at things and, mm -hmm. and try to decide, does this need more or less? Instead of running, because these are getting water from our grass sprinklers, it'd be nice if you could do like, if you had two lines, long black poly lines along our fence line, mm -hmm. that had emitters that you could just pop over, like right. lift over and put it along the trees, run it for a little while, and then move it back to the fence yeah. so you don't mow over them or anything like well, that. Well, you could trench just a poly line in the grass. You could. And just have... Uh, oh, so you, it. it's so funny. Aaron thinks long term, like let's get this trenched and get it to where it works well. I'm like, let's just have things on top of the soil surface. Yeah. Move a wheel line every day. Well, it wouldn't take trenching a poly line wouldn't be that hard. No, it really. Because wouldn't. you wouldn't, you could do it all by hand, and I, you really could just split the grass open and stick it in there. I think you'll find too that over time. I mean, this is the second 
year for these trees, I think that it will get better and better yeah. as they root in more and more. You may not have that kind of issue. Yeah. Um, also, I think the one that you put the soil acidifier around in the back yeah. corner looks it has the, the best. best fall color. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go harder on soil acidifier mm -hmm. sulfur. Yeah. For our high pH year. to counter that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That will help with scorching as well, uh -huh. because I think some were dealing with chlorosis and have scorched because of that, right? And maybe not just the heat. Yeah, it's just it's one of those things. It's just a list of what could be going wrong and start checking off. Yep. Like addressing each one of those issues. Allison said, "You don't have a cement border along the brick on the driveway. Why is it necessary to have now? The uh, versus the Hartley cement. Um, so right there, I didn't want to have." I didn't want to have the plastic barrier. That's the one, they do have that along the bricks, along the driveway. So one side does have the plastic barrier. The other side they did do, didn't they do a little concrete barrier? Like the one by the weeping willow over here? I know I, there's concrete. Did they use some polymeric sand? Is that what they used instead of concrete? I don't know. But the, I do know one side was the plastic barrier and the other side there was like something they heaped up mm -hmm. on one side of it. Yeah, it yeah. Does, yeah. So they do have uh, things holding the bricks together there. And they did do sand between the bricks, which we asked them not to do. Well, they're Harley. going to. He just ordered the, the, the different, different kind stuff. of sand. Yeah. They tried out a new kind <laughs> on the brick walkway up to our back kitchen door. And it's horrid. <laughs> horrid. Like, we can't get it off the bricks. So I think it's just going to have to wear off over time. Yeah. But, like, the color is just, it just washed our bricks out so much. It's so sad. The rocks, though, are improving. Yeah. It, I think that those have cleaned off. I, maybe it's because they're, both like, a not as porous as the brick, mm -hmm. maybe. Those look great. The color is great. But um, we're going to have to work on cleaning off the bricks. Just keep on cleaning them until yeah. they deepen. Um, we could do a sealer of some kind, too. But I just want to make sure whatever we use isn't slippery when it gets wet. I mean, we have little kids that are running around, and you know, I don't want anybody slipping on it. Beverly said, uh, do you think that you might put ground lighting to shine on the four new trees or the Hartley? Yes. When the new boxwoods are established, Aaron will be excited to hang Christmas lights on them. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah. So I actually am talking with two companies right now. Um, hopefully one of them is interested. <laughs> they, they seemed like maybe, we'll just see. Um, but I, I guess I won't say who the companies are. We'll, we'll find out what happens but but uh where are they out of are they lighting of... companies one of them is based out of i think they're both out of california actually oh. yeah landscape lighting yeah that'd be nice anita said love seeing all the hands on deck in the rain approach it's so amazing to see your vision come to life how many boxwoods were ordered for the hartley project i ordered uh, i thought i needed 200 so i ordered 225 and we ended up needing 218 of them so i thought uh, we actually set out 220 and then I pulled two from the end caps on either side because uh, we didn't need quite that many. So yeah, I've got, what is that, seven sitting there left over, which is perfect because I will winter those over with our other things that we're going to winter over behind the greenhouse. And if we should you know, happen to lose any out there, we'll have at least a few to plug in that came from the same group. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, yeah, quite a number of them. It was one of those things we ordered in the spring that I really, I mean, I'm glad we did order them. Because if you don't order them them early, oftentimes you can't get them later in the season. But it was a pain to keep them happy all summer. Bethany was like singing huge, yeah. Praises. Yeah, for getting those in the ground, not having to water them with the hose every day. Uh, last question, pattern and craft. Not to be annoying, but how do you check the placement of the new Hartley maples? One looks a bit closer to the curve of bricks than the other three. They look great, though. They're all exactly five feet, my feet, away five from the edge of the brick. Feet. Five Laura feet. The, none of them are closer. It could be the shape of the canopy is giving you the illusion, but um, they're all exactly centered with the curve, and they're five, the trunks are five of my feet. Away. One of them was four and like three quarters of your feet. Oh, I thought, it, well, that's true. That last yeah, one. Yeah, that last one because it butted up against a, but I don't think. It's it, like this much. Yeah, I don't even like know that, that how you would tell that. We can't. I don't can't. think anybody could, would notice it. Yeah. Well, except for Pattern and Craft. Yeah. <laughs> noticed it. Well, they could have been noticing a different one. I forgot though. about, that was the last one, huh? Uh-huh. Yeah. But the canopy on that one is weird, too. It has one side that's, like, way wider oh, really? than the other. Remember I asked you if you guys could uh, turn it just, like, oh, a sure. quarter of the way? Because It'll just probably to make over it, time just Yeah, you won't even... Even out. Well, and what's a quarter of a brick? Two inches yeah. or less? The whole area of your garden is the most exciting to me, even though I usually don't prefer form formal gardens. It's perfect around the beautiful glass greenhouse, and I love the shape you chose for your brickwork and the step down defines the space well. I just... I love seeing that whole thing come to life. It really... 
it really is a fun space. I'm so excited to add some things. I think, you know, I think I'm gonna put a container in the center of those four uh, brick beds in the back just for this winter, do a winter arrangement. And um, I'm just excited to start experimenting with some different things. But I can see the sun is popping out out there, which is great. We're gonna go plant more boxwoods around that structure right now. That is the last question for this week's recap. So I hope you guys are all having a great day, have a great week, and we will see you in the next one. Bye.